No. But see, Satan knows that there are a lot of people that that won't be good enough for. And they're going to go and, and some, he, he's allowed someone to go and make up forgeries. And see, this is, this is where it's the con man is great at their game. Con man knows there's no book of Jasher. So I'm going to capitalize on this. Because you could just go backwards and say, well, what is the Bible reference that, that we don't really know about today? Oh, there we go. Now you could come up with anything you want. Anything you want, you could put in this book and say, oh, this is, this is the book of Jasher. Hey, look what, look what we've uncovered under this rock in this cave in the Middle East. Look, oh, <laughs> it's the book of Jasher. It survived all these years. We've got it. And even if it is like, like somewhat older, you know, you find some older manuscript that, that wasn't just planted there because people, people have been already known to fake stuff like this. Someone just did it then, right? Maybe the Bible wasn't, you know, the writing wasn't 4,000 years old at the time. It was only 1,000 years old and they, and they did the same exact con game of writing this book of Jasher. It's very, it's very reasonable, and it's, that's actually the case of what happened here. I actually went and looked up the book of Jasher and started reading it just to see what it's all about, because there is a book of Jasher that exists, but the book of Jasher, this is one of the books that's, that's even, even online, I don't know if there's anyone who tries to teach that this is actually like, should be the word of God. But you also have those people, too, that say, oh, well, how do you know that this is in Scripture, right? And people say, well, so you're just trusting this Council of Nicaea from, you know, 300 A.D. that they, they're the ones that gave you your Bible. You just trust the Catholics. They gave you your Bible. No, dummy. I'm not trusting the Catholics that gave me the Bible. We're trusting that the churches that were valid New Testament churches knew what the scriptures were, and they continued to share the epistles and pass that down throughout the centuries. Now, it just so happened to be that there was a council where, where people were trying to determine what were they going to believe, but that's what it was. As a, as a council of people were deciding what were they going to believe, what were they going to assume, and what were they going to choose. But that doesn't mean that just because that, that they said it, that that's why it stands. There's a lot more to it than just some group of people sitting around a table. And it's actually very easy to tell, specifically in this book of Jeshua. I, I read like the first, I don't know, seven chapters or something. And <laughs> like all of the frauds, they're so easy to spot. The more you read the Bible, the, so much easier it is to identify the fraud. And you know, that's actually, that's, that's how people work in fraud departments, like people who are looking to, to, to find counterfeit money. It's people who have studied real money just in, they just study that and study. They don't have to go out and learn all the different frauds. They just have to know the real thing inside and out. And then when they see something that doesn't match, it's, oh, it's okay. Yeah, that's, that's the fraud right there. There's a counterfeit. There's a counterfeit. Why? Because they know the real one so well. And when you know the real, Bible, when you know God's word really well, these frauds just stand out like a sore thumb. What they do is they try to use biblical type language, like the Book of Mormon, right? There's a fraud for you, uh, any of these. And, and what's common, I think, between all of them, and I'm not an expert in all of these different languages, but you know what? I have read this book quite a bit. And apart from maybe Deuteronomy or First and Second Chronicles, you don't have repeats of stories like like just being told like you know we don't have a repeat of genesis in the bible and even those books i mentioned they're not total repeats either so if you compare first and second kings with first and second chronicles they're different sources of the same events but from slightly different perspectives and they give you different information but they're both written as scripture that you could tell the, the, the style of the Holy Ghost, to let alone the, the, the writers. And um, what this book of Jasher does, almost the, the whole book, all it covers in content 
is the first five books of Moses and the book of Joshua. And that's where it ends. And that's where it stops. So it goes through everything already. It's like, why would that be scripture? God already gave us the first five books of Moses and the book of Joshua. Like, we already have that. We don't need it again. And a lot of it literally is just repeating Almost word for word. I didn't do a full on study of good. Is it word for word? But just reading it, and knowing the stories and knowing my own, just like, yeah, it says that, 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 that. And why does it do that? Because it wants to build credibility. But then what it does is it just inserts the creativity or imagination of whoever is writing it to just add whatever details they want in whatever areas they want to. So they, there, there's some story, stories in the Bible and they just decide to just start adding their own spin and adding their own twist and saying, oh, here's the parts that you didn't know, kind of like behind the scenes, right? Here's, here's all that extra information that you wanted to know that's not recorded for us in Scripture, but here it is anyways. It's all for you.